Okay, so uh, let me uh, recall several things to uh, continue with our discussion. See, we have we have the upper half plane, uh, the set of all complex numbers such that, uh, or let me use tau, such that imaginary part of tau is positive, and uh, then uh, we know that. I uh, see we are. Uh, uh, we are looking at this quotient uh, u to u mod p s l to z and uh, th this quotient has the following meaning uh, tau going to uh, uh, the equivalence class of tau modulo the uh, action of this group p s l to z which is the uni unimodular group namely tau going to its orbit. Okay, this is just the set of orbits of the uh, group u unimodular group p s l to z on the upper half plane and it, this is just tau going to its orbit but then we think of it also as uh, the isomorphism class of the complex torus defined by tau okay and uh, our aim is we want to show that uh, we want to show that this as a Riemann surface is uh, biholomorphic to c that is isomorphic holomorphically isomorphic to, to the complex plane okay. So uh, what we did was we have constructed a function j the uh, so called elliptic modular function which value which which is a holomorphic function with values in c okay and the way we got j was we got uh, first a function j tilde which was uh, defined on the upper half plane which is a, which was a holomorphic function defined on the upper half plane and we proved that j tilde is uh, p s l to z invariant okay and therefore it goes down to a holomorphic map j. So if you if you recall uh, for for a tau we we uh, given tau uh, using the the Weierstrass phi function uh, associated to tau okay we defined uh, the the partially modular function okay the, the function that is modular not under the uh, whole unimodular group but only under the congruence mod 2 subgroup uh, which we called as lambda of tau okay and this was uh, uh, e3 of tau minus e2 of tau by e1 of tau minus e2 of tau where uh, uh, e1 e2 e3 were are related to the uh, the waste as phi function. Uh, these are the uh, these are the uh, zeros of uh, the derivative of the Weierstrass phi function, okay. And uh, then using lambda, we defined uh, uh, the uh, the function j tilde. J tilde was the uh, function that was invariant under the whole unimodular group, okay. So. Uh, this lambda was invariant only under the congruence mod 2 subgroup but using this we cooked up j tilde and j tilde was invariant under the whole unimodular group and what was the uh, uh, the definition of j tilde it was as follows uh, um, yeah so uh, so let me write that here uh, so be, so before i write that down let me say lambda uh, is holomorphic on the upper half plane uh, lambda never takes the values uh, 0 and 1 okay. Uh, so lambda holomorphic on the upper half plane lambda not equal to 0 1 on the upper half plane okay. So then uh, then we define Uh, j tilde of tau to be well this was given by a formula so let me write it out it was well it is uh, 4 by 27 4 by 27 into 1 – lambda of tau plus lambda squared tau the whole cube 
uh, was it whole cube or, uh, or was it whole square. So, let me check for a minute yes it is whole cube uh, divided by uh, 1 minus uh, by uh, by lambda lambda square tau into 1 minus lambda tau the whole square okay this is how we define the function j tilde of tau and uh, uh, since lambda is never 0 or 1 on u uh, it turned out that so this de this denominator is never going to vanish and this is the quotient of uh, uh, two holomorphic functions on u with the denominator never vanishing therefore this is a holomorphic function on u okay uh, which is which is uh, 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 holomorphic on u and uh, we proved uh, in the last lecture that this is uh, this function j tilde uh, was uh, psl to z uh, invariant okay So, so the moral of the story is that we have gotten hold of this j tilde we need to uh, next say that this j tilde is uh, so of course uh, uh, j tilde goes down to a map j because any map from uh, uh, u which is constant on orbits will go down to a map uh, uh, to the set of orb from the set of orbits okay. So, j tilde goes down to a map j and uh, of course uh, 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 I want you to realize that uh, uh, j is holomorphic because you see we have already proved that u mod psl to z uh, which is uh, uh, it is already a Riemann surface okay such that the map from u to u mod psl to z is a holomorphic map okay and uh, uh, therefore you see that uh, uh, the and if you and if you look at it carefully okay if you look at that construction carefully you can show that uh, j is also holomorphic um, so j j is uh, j is holomorphic so in fact you see j is holomorphic uh, uh, for the natural uh, riemann surface structure on uh, u mod on u mod psl to z uh, uh, given uh, uh, making that makes that makes uh, the quotient map well let me call this as pi let me call this map as pi that is a quotient map holomorphic. So, the, there is a natural we have already proved this on u mod psl 2 c there is a natural structure of Riemann surface and the structure of Riemann surface is such that if you consider u also as Riemann surface then this map is a holomorphic map okay and uh, uh, so um, okay. So, j becomes a holomorphic function right and uh, our aim is to prove that j is an isomorphism all right. So, there are two steps that we have to ta uh, I mean we have to do it uh, do this in the first step is to show that j is surjective then the second one is to show that j is injective okay. The easy part is the surjectivity okay the hard part is the injectivity okay. The injectivity will require us to again go back and look at the mapping properties of uh, uh, j which depend on the mapping properties of lambda which we already know okay then there is another thing that we will have to study we will have to also study the uh, mapping pro properties of uh, uh, psl to z in the sense that you will have to find a fundamental uh, uh, region for psl to z uh, in the upper half plane okay. So, so the, the subjectivity part is pretty easy so let me write that down so, uh, so let me write this here uh, uh, well a theorem. Um, j is surjective okay j is surjective. So, you see lambda uh, 
lambda uh, lambda does not take the values 0, 0 and 1 okay uh, but j takes all values okay uh, and you know to show that j is subjective it is enough to show that j tilde is subjective alright. So um, that because this is already surjection this is a surjective map it is just uh, every point going to its orbit right. So uh, proof uh, it is enough to show that uh, j tilde is surjective. So I will have to show that j tilde takes every complex value okay. So uh, so what do I do I literally look at the form formula for j tilde and literally solve uh, uh, solve for solve for a value okay. So so suppose suppose uh, mu is a complex number okay suppose mu is a complex number uh, we we can try to solve for tau in the upper half plane or let me say tau not in the upper half plane such that well j tilde of tau not is mu okay okay we can do we can try to solve for this so let us see what it means so you see so you will have well if I write it down uh, uh, 4 by 27 times 1 minus lambda tau naught plus lambda squared tau naught uh, the whole cube divided by lambda squared tau naught into 1 minus lambda tau naught the whole squared this is you want this to be equal to mu naught okay. Now if I uh, uh, cross multiply it out and write it out what I will get is I will get 4 times 1 minus uh, lambda tau naught plus lambda squared tau naught whole cube is equal to 27 mu naught lambda squared tau naught times 1 minus lambda tau naught the whole square this is what I will get okay this is what I will get. Now uh, you think of uh, you first of all think of lambda tau naught as a variable okay think of lambda tau naught as a variable then you see if I think of lambda tau naught as a variable let us let us call it uh, z okay then what I have here is a polynomial equation okay in z and it is a non trivial polynomial equation because on the left on the left side the highest power of uh, the variable is uh, 2 into 3 6 on the right and its coefficient is not 0 okay. So uh, and the right side uh, you have lesser powers okay and uh, uh, now you know uh, the fundamental theorem of algebra guarantees that you give me a polynomial with uh, uh, complex coefficients in one variable there is always a root. So therefore the moral of the story is I can always find uh, a certain I can always find a certain value of uh, 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 lambda of tau naught which uh, when uh, which when I plug uh, into this equation. Uh, will satisfy this equation okay. So let me write that down by by the fundamental theorem of algebra of algebra namely the fact that the complex numbers are algebraically closed okay uh, which is saying that every non trivial comp polynomial with polynomial in one variable with complex coefficients certainly has a 0. Uh, which is a complex number okay uh, uh, we can find we may find lambda not belonging to C such that that lambda tau not is equal to lambda not satisfies uh, this equation uh, maybe I will label this equation as star. So I can certainly find a lambda not such that lambda tau when I instead of lambda tau not if I put lambda not here then it will satisfy this equation namely it will be uh, it will be a solution to this polynomial equation alright. Now you see uh, now the aim is I want to find a tau not such that therefore you see I have to find a tau not such that lambda tau not is lambda not alright. So you see 
uh, so what have I done uh, in order to show that j tilde takes a certain value mu naught I have because of the formula for j tilde and the fundamental theorem of, theorem of algebra I have reduced it to a problem of trying to find solve for lambda for lambda taking a particular value okay. Now we make use of the following fact namely the uh, the mapping properties of lambda that you see lambda takes every complex value on the upper half plane except for 0 and 1 okay. So uh, uh, since lambda takes every complex value you in u uh, well in fact I should say um, yeah lambda takes every complex value in u um, except except 0 and 1 0 and 1 okay we have already done this I need to therefore only check that you see uh, uh, that lambda not is not 0 or 1 okay. So lambda takes every complex value in C except 0 1 okay so uh, yeah that is right. So so the so the only thing I will have to check is that I will have to check that uh, uh, this lambda not is not 0 or 1 okay so so we only need to check we only need to check lambda not cannot be 0 or 1 okay but you see uh, if if I put lambda not equal to 0 or lambda not equal to 1 you will get a contradiction from star okay because after all instead of lambda tau not I have to put lambda not and if I put lambda not as 0 I if I put lambda not as 0 I will get 4 equal to 27. Uh, 4 equal to uh, 0 which is absurd and if I put lambda not equal to 1 then again I will get uh, 4 equal to 0 okay. So I will get 4 equal to 0 in any case which is absurd therefore it cannot happen so lambda lambda not is not 0 or 1 and therefore we are done okay uh, but lambda not is not equal to 0 1 due to star okay. So, so we are done all right therefore you see the the, the function j is subjective so this is a pretty easy thing uh, pretty easy given the fact that you know the mapping properties of lambda all right. Now the, uh, the for the rest of the uh, uh, discussion what we will need to do is we need to show that j is injective okay. So for this we will have to again uh, um, get uh, what is what is called a fundamental region for j and uh, so that will again involve studying maps so let me begin that uh, so you see so what I am going to do now is uh, I am going to draw a big diagram here and uh, um, yeah so let me draw it here yes so this is <coughs> this is one this is uh, minus 1 this is the vertical line through 1 this is the vertical line through minus 1 okay and then I have this uh, I have this point which is half and I have this circle so this is 1 so I will draw something here uh, say here so this is uh, this is 1 plus i uh, well this is uh, i and this is uh, minus 1 plus i well okay so I am going to so I will I will draw uh, the circle centered at half the radius half which we have already seen uh, while studying the mapping properties of lambda and I will draw a similar one here centered at minus half again radius half so this is another circle okay. And then what I am going to do is uh, I am going to now draw circles centered at 0, uh, 1 and minus 1 uh, uh, which are uh, radius 1 all right. So uh, I am going to draw these circles well here is 1 so here is 1 
here is the second one. So this is centered at 0 radius 1, there is one centered at 1 radius 1 which, which will look like this, there is one centered at minus 1 radius 1 which will look like this. And uh, well, I'm also going to draw a couple of lines. Um, well, um, I'm going to draw this vertical line like this that goes through this and passes through uh, the point half, and another vertical line that passes through minus half. Okay, right. So, uh, uh, so the first thing uh, that I want to tell you uh, is just uh, to recall. Uh, what I used here, see this you take the region that is bounded by uh, by this uh, the uh, uh, you know the positive uh, imaginary axis and uh, this semicircle and then this ray okay namely you take this region right and that region was supposed to be mapped by uh, that, uh, that region was proved to be mapped by uh, lambda onto the upper half plane. Okay, and this and the corresponding region here, which is a reflection of that region by the imaginary axis, namely the region bounded by this, this, and this, namely this region. This region was uh, mapped by lambda onto the lower half plane, and the you we were able to extend the mapping lambda to uh, continuous uh, uh, one one map to the boundary, so that you know uh, the real line is also covered. Okay, and uh, therefore uh, put together both put together you see uh, we we proved that uh, lambda takes all values on the complex plane except uh, for the values 0 and 1 because lambda uh, uh, lambda went to 1 as you go lambda takes the value 1 at 0 and it takes the value infinity at 1 okay. So you will have to consider the point at infinity if you want the value 1 right uh, and of course uh, you know this this much was enough to study because lambda was having period 2 okay. So uh, this whole thing is uh, you know uh, uh, spread over uh, an x coordinate of length 2 so it is enough to study lambda here okay. So that is something that we have already done. Now you see this this function j that we have cooked up is slightly more complicated. So uh, uh, so let me tell you that for j what is going to happen is that the uh, the fundamental uh, I mean the, the, the region that is going to that j is going to map onto the upper half plane will be this piece okay bounded by this. So this piece will be mapped by j onto the upper half plane and its reflection delta prime is going to be mapped by j onto the lower half plane and uh, so uh, that is what we will have to show first okay. So how do we do this? So we do this by considering uh, several uh, uh, Mobius transformations. See, if you remember, uh, how did we show that uh, j uh, j tilde uh, was PSL two z invariant? Because we showed that uh, j tilde was invariant under uh, as uh, well uh, as a bunch of Mobius transformations. In fact, six of them, including the identity, which gave us a complete set of uh, uh, mo uh, complete set of unimodular elements in z mod 2 that is mod 2 okay so that is how we verified it and these in fact uh, uh, in fact studying lambda on these uh, helped us to understand what happens uh, if a, an arbitrary unimodular element acts on lambda okay. So uh, so let me write out those let me write re recall those uh, uh, those transformations so they are they are as follows here they are uh, maybe uh, the numbering is well I will be consistent with what I wrote earlier. So this is the identity map the identity Mobius transformation then you have a2 of tau which is uh, translation by 1 then you have a3 of tau which is uh, uh, minus 1 by tau then you have a4 of tau which is uh, minus 1 by tau plus 1 a5 of tau is tau by tau plus 1 and a6 of tau 
is well 1 by 1 minus 2 okay. So these were the 6 uh, uh, Mobius transformations which if you uh, if you consider them as elements of PS, PSL 2 Z okay and read them mod 2 then you would get all the 6 elements of PSL 2 Z mod 2 okay. So uh, and in fact uh, lambda uh, when you apply uh, this to lamb each of these to lambda then lambda satisfies a certain functional equation that is uh, that is something that we proved and that was used to show that uh, that was used in the proof of showing that J tilde is uh, uh, you know uh, is not affected by any element of PSL 2 Z PSL 2 Z invariant right. So you see now uh, what I want to tell you is so let me so let me write this down so I will draw some I uh, will draw some arrows and I will draw some uh, I will do some shading to tell you what happens so this delta is uh, so I what I want to say is see if I call this thing as delta okay then uh, then this delta is of course uh, well this is this is uh, that is a1 of delta because after all a1 is identity all right uh, and uh, then this one this see this region here is a2 inverse of delta which is pretty obvious ob it is pretty obvious because see a2 is translation by 1 a2 inverse is translation by minus 1. So this region is got by this region just by translating by minus 1 so it is a2 inverse of delta so I will shade that also okay uh, and right then uh, the the nice thing is uh, this region here this region here turns out to be a3 of delta okay so this this region here is a3 of delta and mind you this is uh, well a3 is the same as a3 inverse okay a3 is a3 inverse right so uh, well you, you can call this as a3 delta or you can also call it as a3 inverse delta all right uh, but I am trying to write everything in terms of inverses so let me call this a3 inverse delta right okay and that is this region right. Then uh, this region here uh, this region here is translate of a3 by a2 literally translate by translation by 1 okay so and this turns out to be a6 it this turns out to be a4 delta which is same as a6 uh, a6 inverse of delta okay so that's right so this is so this is a6 inverse of delta right and uh, what is happening here is well and let me write these from certain results here so uh, a th you apply a3 inverse then you apply translation by 1 which is uh, a2 what you get is uh, a6 inverse and uh, that is the same as a4 okay. So uh, this is something that you can check um, yes and uh, then uh, this guy here I mean this read this piece here this piece here turns out to be uh, this is a4 inverse delta that is this piece this is a4 inverse delta and of course you know a4 inverse delta is a6 delta because a6 inverse is a4 okay and then there is this piece and this is a5 inverse delta. which is this piece okay and a5 inverse turns out to be uh, of course it is uh, a2 inverse a6 because you see it is just uh, uh, a4 inverse is just a6 and then this is applying a2 inverse translating by minus 1 all right is also the same as a2 inverse uh, a6 is a4 inverse right. So uh, so the so the moral of the story is 
that uh, this is how the regions are mapped into each other by uh, a1 inverse of course a1 inverse is just a1 a2 inverse a3 inverse a4 inverse a5 inverse a6 inverse okay of course you can renum re you can renumber them if you want a certain order okay but that is not the point the point is they are all mapped biholomorphically onto one another with the boundaries and if you want to also uh, uh, I am going I will let me explain a couple of uh, these uh, how do you how do you uh, check this uh, for a couple of regions and then uh, you can do it on your own for all the regions alright. So uh, but of course when we say we should also because these are all conformal maps you will have to give orientations to the boundaries so let me do that so the orientations are as follows so if I take uh, I will use a triple arrow uh, orientation uh, for uh, I will use single arrows double arrows and triple arrows so here is uh, and this is not to be confused with on any of these so let me just put it here and put a triangle here and similarly a triangle here okay so here is a triple arrow uh, and then this is a single arrow and this is a double arrow and what do the what do they correspond to well uh, well of course when I go from here to here the orientations are not going to change so you see this is continuing going to continue to be a triple arrow this is going to continue to be a double arrow and this is going to continue like this right so this is going to continue like this okay and uh, the question is how does it go from here to here okay so the this uh, goes to this so this goes to this and this goes to this okay so this arc goes to this arc uh, from infinity to i goes from 0 to i okay and uh, the the double arrow is this one so this goes to this okay right and in the same way uh, you can draw uh, orientations for all of them so let me draw it for this one so here so this arc uh, will go to this uh, this goes to this okay um, and well the other one is this okay and let me draw something here for this one so here it is this uh, it is these three and well it is these two so this is how the regions are so then of course you know this is just translation so uh, you know that from this I can uh, put a three arrow heads here and I can put double arrow arrow head here and of course an arrow head like this okay. So this is how these uh, regions are mapped okay and uh, well the uh, so you see now you see if you look at uh, uh, so so what I want to now tell you is that the unshaded region is mapped also to so you see there are six shaded regions uh, there are three here and there are three here and all these six shaded regions are mapped by the inverses of all these guys La the, the region delta is the is mapped all the six regions including itself by the inverses of all these maps all right and the fact is that if you take the region delta prime that will be mapped to the others to the six unshaded regions by all these maps themselves okay that is the that is the claim okay and uh, what is the result of this claim the result of this claim is you see you uh, so so in particular if you take delta and delta prime okay then using these uh, these six elements or their inverses I can map uh, uh, the regions composing of delta and delta prime to all the to 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 this region as well as this region okay and then you see that is mapped by uh, lambda onto the whole uh, complex plane. So uh, the upshot of this is that you can see that this uh, delta will be mapped uh, uh, onto half plane by uh, j delta okay. So, uh, 
so that is the point all right so uh, let me explain how to get these uh, uh, how to get these things so let let me explain a couple of them all right so uh, let let me look at let's look at this guy okay so to find uh, example uh, to find the image uh, of delta under um, a3 suppose i suppose i i'll work this out and then you can uh, do it for uh, the others the others okay fine so i'm just looking at the images under mobius transformations and you know mobius transformations will preserve boundaries all right therefore uh, what i'll have to do is check what happens to each of the boundary curves okay so so in this case if i take this boundary curve okay that is parameterized by i uh, it is parameterized by i times t where t is greater than or equal to 1 okay so if you take if you take it okay it goes to uh, uh, a3 of it and a3 of it is uh, well um, what is it it's minus 1 by it and this is going to be i by t okay so and you know uh, t for me is greater than or equal to 1 okay so as if t is 1 i simply goes to i okay and if uh, t is infinity then uh, a3 of it a3 of infinity will go to 0 all right so the moral of the story is that this uh, line which is coming from infinity to i so this point is i okay this line which is coming from infinity to i is mapped onto this line which is coming from this line segment from 0 to i okay so that is the reason this triple arrowhead corresponds to this triple arrowhead and the orientation is from infinity to i is the same as 0 to i under the image okay okay so next look at look at this the look at this boundary curve okay uh, this boundary curve is uh, just the unit circle all right so it's parameterized by e power i theta okay so if i take e power i theta e power i theta will go to a3 of e power i theta and that's going to be minus 1 by uh, e power i theta and this is minus e power minus i theta and this is e, uh, b since minus 1 is e power uh, i pi okay so this is e power uh, i into pi minus theta okay so you see uh, which is just reflection it is just a reflection uh, about the imaginary axis okay so if theta varies so this point is actually minus 1 it is actually 1 plus uh, uh, i root 3 by 2 okay this is exactly 60 degrees and this is a this point corresponds to a complex cube root of unity okay the one on the upper half plane okay so this so this point is actually uh, 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 let me write this uh, 1 plus i root 3 i root 3 by 2 right and uh, so theta is varying so as theta varies from 60 to 90 okay pi minus theta will vary from 120 to 90 okay so this the image of this curve this arc of the unit circle will be precisely this arc of the unit circle that is the reason why I put a single arrow head from here to here and that corresponds to a single arrow head from here to here okay then I will have to look at this boundary curve. So that boundary curve is so so this is here the parameter is uh, pi by 3 less than or equal to theta less than or equal to pi by 2 that is the, the that is this this portion of the arc right which is mapped to this portion of the arc. Now uh, I will have to next look at uh, this boundary uh, curve okay which is the line real part of uh, z equal to half or real part of tau equal to half because we consider the variable think of this as a tau plane okay not the z plane so this is a tau plane okay so well um, uh, what is the parameterization for this line it is uh, uh, half plus i t that is the parameterization for this line and where will it go to it will go to well uh, a3 of half plus it that is going to be if I write it out it is going to be minus 1 by half plus it 
that is uh, let us multiply and divide by the conjugate complex number so that I get a real denominator. So I end up with uh, so which is uh, which is as a point in co uh, with coordinates it is uh, minus half by 1 by 4 plus t squared comma i t by by 4 plus t squared okay um, and well that is supposed to correspond to uh, you know uh, this the image of this uh, line should be this arc. So what is this? This is a circle centered at minus 1 radius 1. So to show that it is indeed that you use you uh, show that 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 parametric representation satisfies the equation of the circle. So what you do is that if you calculate if you call this as capital X comma Y okay then you check whether it satisfies the equation of the unit circle center at minus 1 comma 0. So you calculate x plus 1 the whole square plus y square okay you will see that x plus 1 the whole square plus y square turns out to be in fact 1 let us write it out it is minus half by 1 by 4 plus t square plus 1 the whole square plus i t uh, sorry I should if I write it as coordinates I should remove this i okay. So so it is i it is t by 1 by 4 plus t squared the whole squared and uh, if I write it I will get I uh, will get 1. So uh, what is this this is uh, so let me write it here this is going to be well um, the numerator I am going to get here I am going to get you know minus half plus uh, 1 by 4 plus t squared whole squared plus uh, t by 1 by 4 plus t squared the whole squared and uh, this is of obviously going to give me t squared minus 1 by 4 the whole square and if I simplify this I will get 1 I will simply get 1 okay because this will be t squared uh, it will be t squared minus uh, uh, 1 by 4 the whole squared and then there is a t squared there if I add it I will get t square plus 1 by 4 the whole square and that will cancel so I will get 1 okay. So, so the moral of the story is that uh, the image of the image of this uh, this line is certainly going to lie on this circle on, on the on, on the circle and of course uh, the point at infinity I will get by putting uh, t equal to infinity if I put t equal to infinity here I will I will get uh, 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 um, I will get 0 both 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 entries will be 0. So, I will get this point okay and if I put t equal to uh, for this point corresponds to uh, t equal to root 3 by 2. So, if I put root 3 by 2 uh, you will see that I will get this point uh, which is minus 1 plus i root 3 by 2 okay. Therefore, this line segment from infinity to uh, 1 plus i root 3 by 2 is mapped onto the arc of the unit circle centered at minus 1 comma 0 from 0 to minus 1 plus i root 3 by 2 okay and that is the reason why I put the arrow the double arrow for this and at and the double arrow for this okay and now uh, because uh, everything is conformal the region enclosed by this is going to be mapped to the region enclosed by this okay uh, where in principle the region inside can be mapped either to the region inside or region outside but you can you can test it at any point and you can see that it has to be mapped to the region inside. So, uh, so that completes the proof of uh, the fact that this this region is mapped by A3 inverse, which is the same as A3 onto this region. Okay. Now, what you can do is you can make similar computations and show that if you apply, uh, uh, I, I mean, A4 inverse, then A5 inverse, and A6 inverse, you get all these regions as stated. Okay, and then uh, as a further exercise, what you can do is you can take delta prime. Okay. And you can show that delta prime uh, is can be mapped to all the unshaded regions. There are six unshaded regions: one, two, three, uh, four, five, and six. Okay. Or we never always consider this region inside the semicircle. Okay. We, this is this is always left out. 
it is uh, everything in that we are considering are uh, is about that uh, is above these two semicircles okay. So, you can check that as well okay and um, so, uh, so let me state what it is that uh, 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 we need to uh, we need to prove namely so here is a claim so here is a, so here is a here is a theorem uh, uh, for which uh, uh, for which we will have, we'll have to do further work so the theorem is that you see if you take delta and delta prime okay and then you take in for the boundary you take of course the boundary will contain this and then this this and then this and then this okay but you leave out these two okay these two you leave out okay so you take delta and delta prime and you take uh, uh, the uh, only this segment you take this segment okay and also of course you take uh, the imaginary axis so basically you take this this whole uh, this whole region and add to it a part of the boundary namely this arc of the unit circle centered at the origin and this vertical line okay the claim is you restrict j tilde to this uh, set uh, then j tilde is uh, both injective as well as surjective on that set okay so let uh, um, D be delta bar union delta prime bar okay and then from that throw away uh, uh, the arc uh, well e power i theta uh, theta varying from th so throw away this arc which is uh, theta varying from pi by 2 to 2 pi by 3 throw this away and also throw away throw away this line because actually you see this line to that line it is translation by 1 and you know translation by 1 is a unimodular element and uh, j values of j are going to be the same uh, therefore uh, all the values of j at current points here are the same as values of j on, on the corresponding points here therefore throw away this vertical line as well and that is the, the set of all uh, tau such that uh, real part of tau is uh, minus half that is this whole line and then I will take imaginary part of tau uh, greater than or equal to uh, root 3 by 2 so I leave out I leave out this uh, I will I will just take out this whole thing okay so and imaginary part of tau is greater than or equal to 3 by 2 okay right so I am just throwing away this this piece I am throwing away this piece okay and then I am taking everything else and therefore when I said delta bar therefore this imaginary axis this portion of the imaginary axis is included uh, i is also there okay I have, I have not thrown out i because I have put theta greater than pi by 2 okay. So let d be this okay this is not a, a uh, it is actually uh, it is not closed okay uh, then uh, j tilde uh, uh, restricted to d is both uh, injective and subjective okay so this is the this is the statement that one has to prove okay this is the statement one has to prove and uh, uh, so this see this 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 script d this region uh, is a very special region okay uh, of course such a region is called a fundamental region for j tilde and what we will prove is we will prove that even for PSL 2C it is a fundamental region okay uh, I mean uh, what 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 we mean by that is in the whole upper half plane okay this region 
consists of exactly one representative of each PSL to z orbit we will prove that as well. So, if you put both together you will get the fact that uh, the, the the function j is actually a bijective holomorphic map ok. So, uh, we have to prove this and we will which is uh, saying that uh, this 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 script d is a fundamental region for j tilde we are we also have to prove that uh, script d is a fundamental region for uh, PSL 2 z ok. In principle it is not a fundamental it is not a region it is actually uh, I mean it is not open part of the boundary is omitted and it is omitted because uh, those values are already taken at other parts of the boundary ok. So, that is the point. So, this is what we will have to do and we will do this uh, in the coming lectures. Uh, so, I will stop here.